Look at you. When was the last time you fed? You're shaking, sweating. Get into character and watch the door. I've got a job to do. He's, he's been around for an awful long time. I mean, he's, he's 90 odd years of age. Um, so, you know, we know he's, he's been around, he's experienced life more than anyone else has. And when we catch up with him, he's just gone through this crazy time when he's just dealing with, with the fact that whether he wants to be a good person or not anymore, whether he wants to be a moral person and, and what that involves and whether it's worth it or not. Hey, Mitchell. It's all about to start I'm drawing up the lists. Made your mind up time. He struggles with it an awful lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's what Mitchell's journey is all about, you know, whether it's worth it or not, whether he should just give in to being a vampire and just, you know, go on with what that's about, because that's what he is, and why deny, why deny that? And surely he owes some loyalty to the vampiric society, or whatever you want to call it, that, that that's what he does. And because he's so kind of renowned in that society as well, it's, it's, it'll be very easy for him to, to fall back into that life. I think Mitchell is a, such an incredible personality and for someone that kind of is trying to abstain from something which is their addiction he's kind of battling his addiction the whole time and i think he's quite an inspirational character how the hell do you think i've survived for the last hundred years there's no escape from it i'm not like you i don't have days off this is what i am Mitchell, he's more of a sort of fatherly figure, I think, in the house, or big brother role. Um, he's definitely the kind of alpha male type character, and I think Annie and George look to him to just be solid as a rock. I suppose Mitchell's become, or made himself, kind of disassociated himself with, with the people who can influence him in, in, in his life to the dark side. Um, so even living with George and Annie and two people that are quite grounded anyway, or not grounded in that sense, grounded wouldn't be the word, but sort of, I suppose, content with who they are. I mean, George isn't with what's happening to him, but, you know, as a person, I suppose, he's fairly sure of who he is and happy with that, and it's worked for him or whatever. So, I mean, being around somebody like that, two people like that, would, would help him an awful lot, I mean. And they're just, I, I guess they're a breath of fresh air. I mean, there's, there's only so much killing and rampaging you can do before you get a pain in your ass of it, you know? So, I mean, being around two cool, bubbly, lovely people <laughs> that have their own issues to deal with. Uh, it's kind of refreshing for him. Why didn't you put him off? I tried, but she kicked me in the shin. The shin, George. Mitchell is just cool. Mitchell is just the effortlessly epitomises cool, whereas George is just not, just doesn't. She won't be interested in me. I'll ask. Do you want me to ask? No, no. Christ, this is so... Playground. Welcome to being a bloke. Trying to think of a food to compare him to. I think Mitchell is more of a pancake, American pancake, quite sweet and lovely, but a bit bad for you. <laughs> he's just cool. Mitchell is just cool, annoyingly. Yeah, really annoyingly. He's cool.